When the Raspberry Pi was first announced, one of the things that was great to see in it was the fact that it had a HDMI um, video output, meaning that we were going to be able to stream full 1080p video quality. Um, many people started to ask if this could be used as a media center. And the obvious port for this was XBMC. Um, XBMC is a software media player uh, that allows you to stream things such as videos, audio, and pictures to your television, very much like you would an Xbox or a PS3. Now, to get this working on the Raspberry Pi, two different groups of people have looked at porting this onto the um, Pi's hardware specifically. The first one we saw was OpenELEC. OpenELEC is an embedded operating system um, which is built specifically to run XBMC. And again, it's an open source and a free platform. The second one we saw was RustBMC, which is a minimal Linux distribution, which is based on Debian. Um, and it also runs XBMC um, and is dedicated for the Raspberry Pi. At first glance, it's not obvious what the differences are between the two versions, because they both are essentially XBMC. Now, the major differences I found are that um, XBMC is normally built off of something like Ubuntu, meaning that in the background it runs all of the normal Ubuntu services. OpenELEC is a minimal version of that, so essentially it's an embedded Linux operating system that only runs XBMC, and you don't get a lot of the stuff that might potentially slow it down. Um, RustBMC is a um, dedicated version of XBMC for the Raspberry Pi, so it's been optimized really, really well to run on the Raspberry Pi hardware specifically, but it does allow a bit more tinkering and people to go in and actually make changes. So it gives um, the same sort of performance that OpenELEC does and the same sort of performance out of the box that an OpenELEC will, but it gives users the ability to go in and tinker and do things if they wish to do so. So it might be the best of both worlds. I guess we'll see which one's popular. So let's take a look at OpenELEC. If you want to use it, one of the first things you're going to have to do is go into their website and download um, a version of their software. Now, when you go there, um, you'll find that there isn't uh, an image file specifically dedicated to the Raspberry Pi. So what you would have to do is download their software onto like a Ubuntu system and then compile and build um, essentially your image files and then port that over to your SD card. Now that's quite a faff and there's quite a lot of work involved in that. So alternatively what you could do is go to my friend's blog which is root9.net and he's been putting up um, those images and doing all that work for you. Um, obviously the last image when this video was done was the 30th of May so if you come down here to this file here you can download his one gig image and that will fit on a one gig SD card. So once you've downloaded your image from root9.net um, you can extract it and then what we'll do is we'll use the Win32 Disk Im Imager software to select that image, select our drive letter and we're going to write that image to the SD card. We'll let it do its thing, plug it into the Pi and then we'll watch it boot. So this is the splash screen you'll get if you successfully um, built your SD card with OpenELEC and it will boot into this screen here. You'll see here that you have um, the ability to watch videos and um, listen to music, look at some pictures and look at some weather. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go to raspbmc.com. Um, once the site's loaded, go to the download section and click on the installer for the operating system you want to do this on. Um, what we're going to then do is download a piece of software which is essentially an SD card builder. Note that I've already installed, uh, plugged in my SD card at this point. So extract the um, zip file and run installer.exe. So one thing that's nice about this installer is it has pre-built into it um, a feature that will reset your SD card and will essentially allow you to view the whole partition. Um, sometimes when you have these um, Raspberry Pi images it can mess up the SD card so Windows can't read it properly. Um, so if you click restore um, device for formatting and then we then go in via Windows and we just want to quickly format um, our SD card so that we know it's completely clean and ready to go for this uh, Rust BMC, XBMC um, port. Okay, once that's done we can close that off and then what we're going to do is we're going to click install. What you'll notice is the first thing it's going to do is it's going to call to the Rust BMC website and download the latest image. If we hit F5 um, repeatedly we can see the image grow so we know that it's still downloading and it's about six um, 
Meg there. Okay, so um, plug in your SD card and power on your Pi. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to see here is the um, boot screen and it's going to say that it's going to connect to the internet and um, download the latest version. Obviously, it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes. Sorry about the quality here, I don't have a capture card. Um, okay, so it's downloading the root file system um, and then it's going to install this. And it's, this takes quite a while, so it says go grab a coffee. So I did. I made myself an Italian ro roast, nice deep full body bold. Okay, so it then uh, installs all the um, kernel modules and the libraries that it needs to run. Okay, and then it will automatically reboot, reboot your system. Um, this is going to um, come up, and the first time this boots, it's going to take a little bit longer than normal because it's installing some of the um, um, components it requires. Okay, so it's just finishing the last few bits off. And if you get this on the boot screen, um, we know that it's booting successfully, and it should look like um, a normal XBMC build. And there we go, we can then view our XBMC image. If you go into the system settings, one of the first things you're going to want to do is calibrate your screen because it probably won't align perfectly with your television. So go into system and then system again. And then go to video output and towards the bottom you've got video calibrations. You have to calibrate the top right hand um, alignment, the bottom right hand, the subtitles and a central one. Okay, so other settings that you have here are in the systems area. Obviously you've got the basic video um, outputs that you can change. You've got your audio outputs. You can change from the HDMI or the um, audio output on the Pi. Um, and you can change a few of those settings there. You also have internet access, so if your Pi is behind a proxy you can set that up. Power saving settings um, and a few other bits and bobs. Okay. Um, what I'm actually doing at this point in time here is I'm actually running um, XBMC in a Windows VMware. The reason I'm doing this um, on a Windows machine VM is because um, I haven't got a capture card and I can show you this in the full quality of the video and essentially the process is exactly the same on a Raspberry Pi as it is here because essentially I'm teaching you um, XBMC and not anything specific to the Raspberry Pi. So um, what you need to do is you need to add a source to um, your uh, video library or, or you know or your picture library um, so let's have a look at it working here so I go into videos and you can see here that I have um, uh, basically files and playlist go to files I have a directory called movies and in here I can load up one of my uh, videos that I want to watch and there we go there's one of me playing Halo a long time ago okay so um, what I can then do is if you want to add a um, pictures library what we can then do is we go into pictures and then we're going to say add source and in here what you could do is you could if you wanted to hit browse and you could add uh, an NFF share uh, on your network or a UPnP device um, for this example I'm just going to add um, something for my C directory my desktop I'm going to add the directory pictures Okay, so I'm now going to uh, add that and OK and hit enter. So now, if I then uh, obviously we're back at this screen here, I've got a pictures and pictures. And to make it for using Windows, I've got a picture of a baby uh, rankle there. So um, that's essentially one of the last things that should hopefully just get you up and running with your XBM XBMC um, box. From here, I would say if you've got any questions, go to the Raspberry Pi Media Center um, forum, um, or maybe try um, you know the, the standard XBMC forum and see if people can help you out. So